Hello class, we are still moving on with logs, more and more logs, and now we are graphing logs. Logs are pretty common in modeling natural phenomena in the world, so graphs of them are going to come up fairly often. We have started talking about how you can condense and expand log expressions. Did a lot of that last time, so make sure that that's straight in your head. And if you want to come with an example, um, here's motivation for you to try that. It might take you a while, hopefully not so long that you turn into dry bones. But what we're going to be doing now is moving logs out of the algebraic realm and into the geometric realm to be able to be looking at their graphs. And as we saw with the algebra, there are a lot of right answers. There are a lot of things that you could do. You could do this a lot of different ways. So we need to recognize that a lot of different equations are going to have the same graph. So when we think about how we can try to figure out some points to be able to plug into our equation, um, we've seen how to plug into exponential, that you just raise, in this case, we're talking about y equals e to the x, you would just raise uh, e to various powers, that e to the 0 is 1, e to the 1 is e, e to the negative one is one over e, about a third, stuff like that. So this is what the graph of that looks like. Graphing exponential functions is pretty straightforward. The only really easy points to find with something like e, assuming you know it's about 2.7, is to the one, to the zero, to the negative one. Hopefully you can see from your mind's eye that it's gonna have an asymptote at zero, that this continually smaller fractions, one over e, one over e squared, one over e cubed, one over e to the fourth, on and on and on to the left, is just gonna make smaller and smaller fractions, never zero. It's gonna get tinier and tinier and tinier, but never make it. So that's an asymptote, a line that we can get arbitrarily close to. And then off to the right, it's shooting up like a rocket, very, very quickly. When we wanna to try to find the inverse of this, which is what we're saying that logs are, you know that inverses are made algebraically by swapping x and y, and then we try to solve for y. So we would need to take the log of both sides, and that's what allows us to then pull y down as no longer an exponent. And so we simply are gonna take the inverse of an exponent to make a log. That's the definition of logs versus powers. They're just the inverses of each other. So when you think about what does an inverse look like graphically, you know that it is the reflection over the line uh, y equals x. So when you look at the graph of ln x, uh, that's log base e of x, that's saying what power do I put on e to get zero? Well, if I put a, uh, z a uh, an exponent of zero, then I get one, excuse me. What exponent do I put on e to get one? It's zero. What exponent do I put on e to get e? That's one. It's just the reverse, uh, the inverse of the exponential function that we just graphed. So e to the x, ln x, they're the same graphs as each other, just reflections over the line y equals x. So I hope you can see that if you held a mirror up there to the line y equals x, that these are just bounces off of each other. So like on the e to the x graph, you've got 0, 1. On the ln graph, you've got 1, 0. On the e to the x graph, you've got 1, e. On the ln graph, you've got e, 1. So at most importantly, visually, is to recognize that for e to the x, there's an asymptote at y equals 0. For ln x, there's an asymptote at x equals 0. So that's Where's the asymptote is one of the most defining features about these graphs. So think about that thing that we just said. You've got an asymptote getting forever closer to uh, zero, but never quite making it. And now we're going to do what we've always done with functions since chapter one, is move them around. The a value is going to move it up and down. When you've got some addition on the outside, that moves you up and down. When you've got multiplication on the outside, that stretches you up and down. Um, the x is, uh, the c, excuse me, the base is going to be the uh, growth rate. How fast is it growing? And then we might move it left or right, which essentially we only really care about to move the asymptote. That's the key feature there. 
So let's come down out of the, the big picture and talk about one in particular. Um, when we've got a, a particular graph like this, we can say, what is the domain and range? So we're looking at some kind of log here, and there's clearly an asymptote at x equals 1. So we're not ever going to actually reach the value of 1. So our domain is going to be x is greater than, not equal to, greater than 1. And our range is going to be all real numbers. The uh, equation for this is going to be uh, a bit trickier that we've got to say, well, what is the growth rate, first of all? Trying to figure out how quickly is this equation uh, growing. Well, look at this kind of tilt your head and look at it sideways. That 2, 3, and 3, 4, there it went up 1. And then in the next, I mean, it went right 1. And then in the next increment, 3, 4 to 5, 5, it went 2. And then in the next one, 5, 5 to 9, 6, it went right 4. So 1, 2, 4, aha, this is powers of 2. So the, uh, the growth rate, the base of the log, is going to be 2. We've moved 1 to the right. We can tell that because the asymptote is not at 0. It's um, been moved over. And then we would have expected that that little moment there, 2, 3 to 3, 4, where it grows by just a step of 1, we would have expected that to happen on the x-axis. So it's been moved up 3. So the equation is going to be 3 plus log base 2 of x minus 1. So you could also, you might be given the graph to look at and try to reverse engineer it that way, or you might be given the numerical pattern. You might be given the data, and since we said exponential was add multiply, what would you think the inverse would be? If we're going to swap x and y, and uh, the original is add multiply, then of course the logarithmic pattern is going to be multiply add.